Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergster Arcade at BergsterArcade.com and in this video we're going to go ahead and start creating the driver for our floating text. So let's go ahead, we'll open up Unity and we're going to go ahead and open up Model Develop as well. I already have it open. Alright, so we've created a driver before for our last scene. It's pretty much the exact same. We're going to open up the hierarchy here of our UI root all the way down the panel. We're going to take our driver, go ahead, drag it on and that puts it in the scene. I actually want to move it a bit. Uh, I want it up a little bit, just so it's uh, a little bit clear of everything else in the scene. Now I'm going to come in, I'm going to go ahead and remove the old script that we have on there. So I'm just going to remove the component. And I'm going to come in here, into our scripts, create a new C-sharp script. And I'm going to call this floating text driver. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that onto our driver. And I'm going to select my driver, make sure it's there. I also want to check the prefab because I'm used to this turning, uh, well, not blue. Uh, still seems to be the same as it was before, and that's fine. So let's go ahead and open up our script for our floating text driver. And right off the bat, there's a few things we're going to want to do. Uh, I usually start by gutting those. I'm going to want to create a public. Now, actually, two public variables here, one for uh, the game object we want to target and one for the actual floating text. Now, later on, we'll be instantiating it, so we won't need this uh, public variable to drag our floating text onto. But until then, for now, we're just going to uh, drag it over in the inspector. So public game object. And this will be for our target. And public. Uh, we're going to do a floating text. And I'm just going to call this FT. Uh, all right, so we'll go ahead, we'll save that off. I'm going to go over, select my driver, make sure both of them are popping up. I'm going to go ahead and assign these now. So I'm going to put the name in the target. And the floating text goes in the floating text. All right. We'll save that off. And we'll come back in. I'm going to create my on click event. Uh, so public void on click. And in here, all I want to do is come in and take my floating text dot target and assign it the actual target that I have here. And if we go ahead and we stop that, or save it off, sorry, and go ahead and hit start. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit the, hit the click button. Uh, nothing is happening. Let me just check here. We do have the name and the floating text. Uh, we'll come over here. Uh, so if we're not, ah, uh, we're probably not setting it to active. Let me see. Uh, yeah, we're not setting it to active. So by default, I'm just going to go ahead and set, well, let's just do it here. We'll set it active here. So FT dot active, whoops, is equal to true. So we'll go ahead, we'll start this up. And when we click, there we go. Now it would be kind of cool if uh, we select the floating text and just don't put anything in here. Uh, of course, when we start up, we actually are not assigning anything yet, but we could see it jump. Let's go ahead and do that next. Uh, so we'll go ft.text is equal to, and we'll just do evil QB. It's been around for quite a while. So we'll go ahead, we'll save that off. There was no errors. We'll hit driver and boom, there we go. So those are working. I'm gonna go ahead, select that, move it around. I've got it backwards, but that's fine. We can see that it, it does stick with it. Uh, let's close it off. Let's look at some other methods here that we wanna test. Uh, so we've got the string, we can change the color. So let's go back into this one. Let's test that, make sure it works. Uh, I can't see why it wouldn't, but ft dot color text color uh, is equal to, and am I actually passing in a color value? 
probably more than likely. Yes, I am passing a color. I keep trying to tab out, but anyway. Color dot red. And we'll go ahead. And when we hit the driver button, there we go. So that's working fine. Uh, any other methods we want to test while we're here? We've got text, we've got the activate, we've got the target. So all of these are working great. Uh, I'd like to make one addition here where we can actually uh, send a lot of these values in simultaneously. So make sure this is stopped. We're going to come over here and uh, I guess I'll just do it down here at the bottom. So public. And I'm not sure what I want to return. I don't want to return anything here. I'm just going to call it setup. Actually, I don't want to call it setup. Let's call it init. And this is going to take a series of variables. So I want to be able to uh, set the string that's going to be coming in. So string, I'm not going to call it txt. I'm going to want to be able to, uh, I guess we'll send in the color as well. So color, uh, CLR. And I also want to be able to send in uh, the target. So it's a game object. And I'm just going to call it tar. Rgo. And all we have to do is actually just call these methods up here. But this just allows me to send all three in at the same time. So I'm going to say text color. is equal to CLR and text is equal to TXT and target is equal to GO. And let's go ahead and we'll try this one out now. So I'm gonna go back into my floating driver I'm going to comment these out, well, except for the activate. I purposely made, whoops, made sure that activate was uh, not part of that because there might be times where you want to set it up and you don't want it to be activated just yet. All right, so we're going to go ft.init. And if we take a look here, the first thing it wants is a string. So I'm just going to pass in a string and I'm going to call it evil2. All right, the next thing it wants is a color. And I'm just going to use uh, one of the defaults. Uh, let's do blue this time. And the third thing it wants is a game object. And we are just going to pass in target. So we'll go ahead. We'll save that off. I will start it back up. There were no errors. We'll hit driver. And there we go. Uh, the blue isn't exactly the easiest to see. We should have used a lighter color, maybe cyan or yellow or any of the lighter colors considering the background that we have. Let's do cyan. We'll go ahead, we'll start this back up. There we go, it's a little bit easier to see and we see that you know it still works as intended. Uh, but anyway, there we go, we got our driver set up. It works with all of the functions that we have in here. Uh, so let's keep flushing things out and moving them around. We'll go ahead, we'll move that here. Uh, next, uh, let's take a look at changing font, and then after that, I guess we'll start uh, floating upwards. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.